Stairway to Heaven, Immigrant Song, and many, many more. Incredible rock songs. Led Zeppelin has proven themselves to be one of the most beloved rock and roll bands ever. Today, we're going to show you 10 very interesting facts about the band Led Zeppelin. Let's begin. Yes, it's true. Led Zeppelin never had a number one single. This is insane seeing that they were one of the most popular bands ever. Only a few bands have actually even sold more records than Led Zeppelin. And those musicians were the Beatles, Elvis, the Eagles, and Garth Brooks. The reason this is the case is not for the fact that they were unpopular, but because they took a different approach to how their songs were constructed and released. These songs like Good Times, Bad Times, and Dazed and Confused weren't designed for the pop marketplace. While the Beatles concentrated earlier on short, catchy songs, curated singles that were designed to be as inclusive as possible, side note, they certainly got bored of that, and that's why the Beatles have such a dynamic catalog. Zeppelin decided to sell albums, not singles. However, there are more people involved than just the artists, so Atlantic Record did release Good Times, Bad Times as a single in 1969, before the band was famous. It was conventional for musicians to release single after single and appear on TV often, but lead guitarist Jimmy Page and manager Peter Grant decided that if you wanted Dazed and Confused or Stairway to Heaven, you had to buy the whole album. And although this is mainly the reason why they never had a number one single, they had seven number one albums. John Bonham was known as one of the most uproarious members of Led Zeppelin, even garnering the nickname Bonzo for how loud he hit his drums. But many people don't know that he suffered from terrible stage fright and routinely had panic attacks before shows. But he persevered. I feel this is a good motivational fact for any artists or speakers out there that fear going public. John Bonham is one of the most celebrated drummers of all time, and even he was scared. Don't let that stop you. It's no secret legendary guitarist Jimmy Page was very into mysticism, magic, and the occult. The symbolism is everywhere, on the songs, albums, and even clothing. He was so indeed into it that he bought the house of English occultist Alistair Crowley. Crowley founded the religion of Thelem and called himself a prophet entrusted with guiding humanity in the aeon of Horus in the early 20th century. An interesting legend about the house was that many dark rituals and sacrifices were made there by Crowley and his cultists, and when Jimmy spent his first night in the house, he turned off the lights, and when he first walked in his bedroom, he heard something pounding and bouncing off the floor. The next morning, he asked the housekeepers about it, and they quickly changed the subject. As Jimmy turned and walked away, he remembers hearing them mutter, Damn, another one who hears the head roll. Pretty spooky. However, it's important to know that Jimmy maintains that his involvement with this sort of stuff isn't about trying to spread it, saying, I don't really want to go on about my personal beliefs or my involvement in magic. I'm not interested in tuning anybody on to anybody that I'm turned on to. If people want to find things, they find them themselves. And in reference to all the backward voices on their records, he hilariously responds to that in this interview. And so then, they started to play back all manner of records, and of course we were going to be main candidates for it. And, um, <laughs> and somebody, somebody said, oh, it says My Sweet Satan in it. And I thought, oh, gosh, it's hard enough writing the music one way around. <laughs> <than that." laughs> the group, after enduring a harrowing flight from Oakland, California to LA, leased a former United Airlines Boeing 720 passenger jet from 1973 to 1975 lovingly referred to as an effing flying gin palace. It served two purposes, to stop the band from changing hotels for each performance and just fly there and back from a major city, and to be one of the most debaucherously insane transportation machines to ever take to the skies. Starship was so gaudy it was basically obscene. It had a bedroom with a king-size waterbed, a drawing room with a fireplace, a 30-foot brass trim bar with built-in electric organ, and two stewardesses. And after a few short years and hefty costs, Starship was no more. And it was sold. The plane bounced around to a few owners and was decommissioned and split apart for parts in 1982. According to drummer Carmine Apice, Jimi Hendrix didn't like Led Zeppelin, not because of their music, mostly, but because of their alleged practices. He says, Zeppelin did borrow from others. Jimi Hendrix personally told me that he didn't like Zeppelin because they were like excess baggage and that they stole from everybody. 
Jimmy was known to have an encyclopedic knowledge of music and guitars, so he was probably one of the first to realize that Led Zeppelin did a little bit more pinching here and there and resented them for it. However, Jimi Hendrix was a huge fan of John Bonham and tried to snag him numerous times. Even though they were party animals, they were still musicians and in control of their sound. After appearing on French television in June 1969, they realized that the audio video quality of TV at that time was incredibly low, and no matter how well they performed, they would be at the mercy of the studio engineers. So they decided television was not suitable for their sound. When selecting a singer for his new band, Jimmy Page actually didn't go to Robert Plant first. He instead went to the singer Terry Reid, who turned him down, then to the lead singer of The Small Faces, who refused as well. After those two options, Jimmy decided to give Robert Plant a chance, and of course, you could say it worked out well. On the band's first album cover is a photograph of the Hindenburg catastrophe, a descendant of the aviation pioneer Ferdinand von Zeppelin, named Eva von Zeppelin, took issue with this and tried in vain to prevent a TV appearance of the band. They would have probably helped her seeing how much they hated television. However, she had a small victory. During their Scandinavian tour in 1970, Jimmy Page says, we invited her backstage to meet us, to see how we were nice young lads. We calmed her down, but on leaving the studio, she saw our LP cover of an airship in flames and she exploded. I had to run and hide. She just blew her top. Faced with an upcoming concert in Copenhagen and a threat of lawsuit from Miss Von Zeppelin, Jimmy Page decided to call the band The Knobs <laughs> when they played in Copenhagen. John Bonham quite liked the more adult reference and jokingly remarked, personally speaking, we could have continued as The Knobs. Just think what other... <laughs> Personally speaking, we could have continued as the knobs. Just think of what our album covers could have looked like. Robert Plant actually used Elvis' slow songs as warm-ups for his voice, and he even told the King about it. Elvis Presley invited the band to his hotel suite after a concert in 1974. Robert rather boldly sang one of Elvis' songs to him right in the hotel room. As the rest of the band held their breath in shock, Elvis watched grinning from ear to ear. The best music facts are how did a band get their name? Well, Led Zeppelin comes from The Who's Keith Moon. In May 1966, Keith Moon and John Entwistle recorded the instrumental Bex Bolero with Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, and Jeff Beck. The track turned out okay and they playfully tossed around the idea of forming a new band. Keith Moon jokingly said the band would go over like a lead balloon, and thus Led Zeppelin was born. Well, that's all for today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.